This is kind of going to be a funky uh, overview teardown. I'm not going to vent the uh, refrigerant to the atmosphere um, or pull apart into every piece, but there's just not too many videos about uh, just a quick look at the insides, essentially, of one of these heat pump air conditioners. This is a pretty old Soleus Air. It did me pretty well. Uh, it was manufactured in March of 2007, so after about 10 or 11 years, the temperature sensors went out. I tried replacing them. I even uh, cut out the side. I did like this design because you did have wider... Uh, it was longer and narrower, but now they're kind of shorter and flatter. Uh, they used to be really expensive. They actually have come down about 100 to $200 for the... 12 to 14,000 BTU. You won't find heat pump air conditioners anything less than about 10,000 to 12,000 BTU. Anything smaller than that and they're all uh, air conditioner only or they have like resistive heaters. You want the heat pump even though this is a single tube still a lot more efficient than electric heater and you'd say well electric heater is near, nearly 100% efficient. A heat pump is actually cooling the outside air. It's literally like taking a window air conditioner and flipping it around backwards. Um, and so you're actually taking air, warmth from the outside air and moving it inside using electricity. So this, these, especially at the 40 to 50 degree range, can be three times more efficient, put out three times the BTU. So I'm going to end up replacing this with another air conditioner heat pump because I like the idea of that. I like the way the heat pump, uh, in my area, sometimes when it's really cold, it's really dry. But a lot of times we, you're getting 35, 40 degree weather where it's raining. And uh, the nice thing about a heat pump is it dries that wet air. So anyway, and there's always tricks. The tricks of this old Sleas Air is getting this top part off. You had a couple screws and then there's some locks that you gotta pry up. Anyway, you just pull out the, uh, these two screws. These things are always kind of funky, these appliances. I have had this apart a couple times, so it may be easier to uh, get this. Yeah, so that just slides off and that gives you access to these upper screws. I'll end up recycling at an appliance center, I'll end up recycling this. And on this one, a couple bottom screws, some screws along the sides. We do have a connector for the front control panel. And that's the infrared remote sensor, so I'll have to pull it loose and then disconnect that. Here's our front panel. So there's a slight design. There's just more of a balance, even though heat pump air conditioners are more tuned for air conditioning. So what would be considered the condenser, what is... Uh, the hot side of the air conditioner still is a little bit bigger than what would normally be the cold side But the whole secret to the heat pumps. I don't think the air conditioning compressor is any different It just seems strange that they charge so much for it because for that upgrade because you'll see inside All it is is a special valve that just reverses both of these so then what normally is the cool side air conditioning your house reverses to become the condenser and so the heat goes out here and then this side actually gets cold and when it gets real cold surprisingly enough even at 35 degree weather this thing would still put out plenty of heat um probably because it was a single hose but if the they had temperature sensors right inside each of these radiators so it could detect if they were frosting up and it would actually stop go to normal air conditioning mode just to self defrost so here we are, and let me get this unplugged here. And here we are, apparently they didn't have plugs on either of these things, so uh, this is the swing motor, and surprisingly enough, it's a, uh, it appears to be a brushless DC motor. 12 volt, so there's a little 12 volt converter in this, and then this is the infrared remote control panel. And then of course there's this deducting here that connects to this, and then Right here is the brains of the operation. In this case, the control panel is just a separate snap-in piece. Here's the inside of the control panel. I always like vacuum phosphor displays. I always thought they were pretty neat. You can see the date of this board is 2006. Some modern equipment's going with touch buttons and they're charging you more and it's actually cheaper for them to do that because then they don't have to pay for these mechanical buttons. I usually keep all the fasteners when I take this type of stuff apart because if you ever go inside another appliance or something, you always end up losing a screw and so you just collect these and you'll always end up having the right size. Anyway, let's uh, get this thing slid apart. There we go. And the other side. Kind of like a giant vacuum cleaner. And there's your whole unit, and technically, you don't need that whole case. If you could run it just like this, and it would blow you know, air out this hole, and 
still suck in and blow out and you could still use the well there would be a little bit of bypassing but not much and it'd still blow up the back there so kind of interesting that the shell doesn't really mean a whole lot here's part of it all styrofoam this is the insulation between the fans and the radiators the styrofoam uh, as cheesy as it is and the way it can break apart etc is a very good insulator I can already tell it looks like these motors are ball bearing because these don't have like a very small area where the uh, the arbor of the motor would be. This is actually pretty big. And being an air conditioner unit, you would think uh, they wouldn't use sleeve bearing motors just because they generate more heat. And air conditioners run for hundreds of, and over their lifetime, this thing probably has a couple thousand hours on it. Uh, they really do use ball bearing motors. And then there's our tall compressor down there. And I'll tilt this up. Let me get a little bit of zoom in here. So you can see this. This part right here is what they're charging on heat pump air conditioners an extra $100 plus for. Is literally this special solenoid controlled valve. It is a special valve. He has a tube here, another tube here, and then there are three tubes going in the bottom because it's a double action valve where it's actually switch. <laughs> in order to switch the evaporator with the condenser and reverse them, there's an input pipe and an output pipe. So there has to be four pipes going into this valve. Plus, I don't know if this is a pressure differential or something with that little capillary tube is. But this valve actually has to switch four tubes, two pairs, with each other. So it is a pretty complicated valve. And the, probably the expense of manufacturing really is why uh, they charge so much. But literally, that's the magic right there, that switching valve. Let's take a look at the brand of the compressor motor here. And surprisingly enough, they're using a Toshiba compressor motor. So that's actually a name brand good compressor motor. I'm really surprised about that. This right here, this long tube, or this kind of looks like a tank right down there. That's an all air conditioning systems, including your car. They're known as the receiver dryer. So as the fluid goes through, it will go through that. This is actually literally filled with silica gel. Those little do not eat packets that come with electronics. That's what that is filled with, and it ensures that there's no water. There cannot be any water, even the tiniest amount of water vapor in an air conditioning system. It really can screw it up because there's something known as the expansion valve. I don't know if it's that's there, but it's the other secret. It's a very, it's a restriction that the compressed uh, refrigerant goes through, and then as it passes through, like the uh, little. Uh, nozzle when that expands that's where that expansion happens and draws heat from the air to, in order to boil the refrigerant and that's what causes the cooling action we can see that we actually have trays for both uh, for draining on both of them because it does reverse you do need separate trays this was one of the units we can see down here let me zoom back in and get that centered this thing right down right here is a uh, uh, one of those uh, like centrifugal dehumidifiers. So this is one of those air conditioners. They've had them for a long time, 15 years, where they will, uh, no need for a drain hose. It will put the water out through the exhaust. And how that does it is through like a motor-driven dehumidifier. This just spins up the water to uh, get it into a mist. And then this little tub is supposed to go along with the exhaust fan here and get sucked out. The problem with this, you know, I had to unplug it is it melted all the posts and the motor got all jammed up in the plastic because this pump motor, <laughs> that was the first failure, was the, the, the mister motor that throws the water out overheated and melted. And uh, so <laughs> this thing could have used some improvements. Fortunately, on this unit, they did, in all air conditioners, they do have uh, an additional drain valve. There's a little drain cock down there, uh, which is what I end up having to use. So anyway, let's take a quick look at the whole control box, because it is huge on this. Now, on th these motors, they're pretty special. There's, if I, let me uh, try to tilt this. This thing is still super heavy, super heavy compressor. There we go. So the compressor needs a big old capacitor because it starts up with a lot of current. So there's the big capacitor for the compressor motor. So you have that. Um, we have a transformer, which is giving us our uh, that and a few capacitors on this board, which is giving us our 12 volt output and what's driving the board. We actually have two capacitors here. And what I find interesting is this, 
These are multi-speed induction motors, not particularly powerful, but they do go low, medium, and high. That's just like a box fan. What I don't really understand is that this upper motor has six wires going to it, and the lower one has four wires. I know a couple of the wires are for the capacitors, but I don't understand why one motor has... Maybe it's because this one has three speeds, and maybe this one has two speeds or something like that. Anyway, let me try to get these motors out of here. Kind of interesting, this transformer is 115 volts AC. I like it when they put labels that tell you, but this has an 11 volt, a 21 volt, and a 2.7 volt output, and gives you the current ratings. Like the 21 volts only for 20 milliamps, that's really surprising, but it's kind of an odd transformer. Here's a quick look at the control board, the other half of the brains, the beeper that beeps. It's amazing they can control that. <laughs> you start to notice exactly how heavy a duty it is. This is a real heavy duty relay for the compressor motor. You can see it's rated for 15 amps at 250 volts, 30 amps at 125 volts. So that's what's starting the compressor. That's actually worth keep desoldering and keeping because that's such a heavy duty uh, relay. And then we have some more normal relays, 12 amp relays, um, six of them. The control turning on and off the various fans, controlling the valve, uh, the uh, various... Uh, Trying to figure out because you have a fan and then the fans have multiple speeds so you need another relay for each of those same with the exhaust fan uh, and with i believe one of these for the evaporation pump but it's just kind of surprising there is seven relays on that i'll keep that and uh desolder those relay boards this thing was not happy part of the uh maybe this is part of the reason it has so much trouble nothing really looks burned on the back of it there's some little funkiness right there under that capacitor uh, but part of the housing was pushing on the circuit board and putting a lot of stress on it there. And last but not least, here is the motors. Uh, the two fan motors, they're just in the assembly, and then there's here's the whole styrofoam thing. This is all one piece. They Apparently it's kind of trapped with the fans. And this is true with almost all major appliances, whether it's air conditioners or uh, washing machines. And not just domestic ones, even Chinese ones. Maybe it's a government regulation, but even this air conditioner, something that was never meant to be serviced or have anybody go inside, still has a little wiring guide diagram chart. And yes, I just figured out they were just using packing tape to hold the two halves of the styrofoam together. That's kind of interesting. You won't see very many times just the, the flow of the air. And since styrofoam, is, this is a mold, these are just the little spots where there is just the little bumps where the 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 filling of it would happen, uh, injection points, and so they leave a little burr, and now you can see how the dust collected up on them. And there's our centrifugal fans, and maybe it is designed obsolescence because these motors, as you can see, the bearings are just fine in them. I'll end up probably keeping them for at least a little while to see if I can't make some kind of use out of them. And I did figure out the wiring a little bit more. This bottom motor, two of the wires just go to the capacitor, so it just has two wires going to it. The exhaust fan, or what would normally be the exhaust fan, was always just a single speed. This motor has four wires, the two others go to the capacitor, so this is the three-speed fan. Uh, input power, and then whether you connect, uh, I would assume would be, <laughs> I'll have to take a look, but... Uh, depending, you know, you'd always have black as common, and whether you hooked black and blue, or black and yellow, or black and white, you'd get your three different speeds. Here's a closer look at the fans. I believe they're fiberglass reinforced nylon. They are nice. I mean, that's a billet aluminum uh, hub that's been pressed in there, so they actually run relatively balanced and just an easy 10 millimeter set screw. Fortunately for me, to make the motors a whole lot easier to use, not only do they have a label, they have a wiring diagram with the colors. I like that. Now I can easily hook this up. We can give a listen. The bearings have had some wear on them. And we know that this is a ball bearing motor because the shaft does not pull in and out. Every motor that has sleeve bearings, you'll get, you know, bathroom fans, all that stuff. Kitchen exhaust fans, they'll all pull in and out a little bit. This one, absolutely not. Absolutely no end play and no lateral play. So pretty nice. What is surprising is the... The indoor motor is a 20 watt, and then the what would be the primary condenser motor is actually a 30 watt. So I thought that's a little bit interesting because it's designed to be a heat pump and run in reverse. So why would they still continue to use a bigger motor 
What is also surprising is both the impellers here are exactly, oh, yep, they are exactly the same size. So why would you put a more powerful motor uh, with the same size fan? Anyway, that was kind of a funky teardown of a heat pump air conditioner. That way people just have a little bit more idea what's inside one of these things. Since there isn't a ton of teardown videos about them, I th figured I'd put in my two cents. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.